right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power, and wow, we witnessed history tonight. This is this was one of the most exciting Olympias I think I've ever seen. I think it was one of the hardest predict Olympias that I've ever seen, and it was a battle to the very end. But I think the end result was so deserved. Hadi Chupin wound up winning the 2022 Mr. Olympia. Since 2019, Hadi has been the most conditioned guy in the Olympia lineup. I think since 2019, you could have made an argument at each one of those Olympias, 19, 20, and 21, for Hadi to be higher than he was, and he was in third place um, on multiple occasions, so he would have been top two, or winning the show. I think a lot of people have argued that Hadi could have won some of those Olympias based on his just incredibly consistent conditioning. So... This, to me, is a really feel-good moment, even though Rami, the defending champion, placed very low, and we're going to talk about that, of course, in a minute, but I, I do think this is a very celebratory moment, because honestly, this really is a long time coming for Hadi Chupin. He did what he does best, and he, come, he came in with that crazy conditioning, and he won the show. Now, the other results, and these results, I feel like, are really directly representative of hearkening in the new era of bodybuilding. We've talked about it for so many years. These young guys that are coming up, they had these fast rising stars in bodybuilding. They've really been, they've been winning the other shows like the Arnold's, like the New York pros. They've been top placers at the Olympia. They've been top 10. But now I think that new era of young bodybuilders is officially here. Derek Lunsford at his first Olympia ever, in men's open bodybuilding, taking second place, and I think that was well-deserved. I said this at pre-judging. I think of all the guys that came out, Derek was the guy that impressed me the most. I mean, I think a lot of us were expecting Derek to do well, but I think he was the guy that really over-delivered beyond expectation of, of how well he thought he could, or how well we thought he could do here. When he came out, I think everybody was just floored with how good he looked in this division coming over from 212. He did not look small at all. He fit right in this division. He looked phenomenal. V taper, the structure that he brought, the conditioning. And shout out to Hani Rambon, man. Hani coached both of these guys. He has two Olympia wins on his coaching resume this year. His Chris Bumstead won classic. Hadi just won open. And then runner-up in open, Derek Lunsford. So Hani Rambod with a very clean sweep at this Olympia. Third place, Nick Walker. Very happy to see this. Nick looked amazing. Nick deserved top three. Um, in my predictions, I had him in fourth. I think he did deserve higher than fourth. He looked better than I expected he would look here. In third place, awesome for Nick. Now, fourth and fifth. This is where I feel like the old guard is is really getting pushed back in the new this new era is really making a statement because this was your top two from last year that are now in fourth and fifth brandon curry in fourth place and i think that was a, des a deserved placing and big rami in fifth place i think the most surprising placing of the night aside from hottie chupin winning which I do think is unfortunate for Rami. I think he looked a lot better at the finals than he looked at prejudging. And then shortly after prejudging, well, the next day we learned that he had this injury. We saw these, these lumps on his quads and his glutes. But I think the revelation of this injury that he's dealing with is probably the biggest part of this because I noticed a lot more at finals. There were some poses that he did really struggle with, even though he looked better at finals. There were some poses where it looked like he was struggling to hit the pose, and I think that was a result of this injury. And I think those little details of him not being able to fully complete a pose in certain poses, I think that could have been a big factor in why he placed where he did. Now, I still think that Rami, he looked decent. I did predict him to win. I'm eating my words. I was 100% wrong. That being said, I still am surprised he placed as low as he did. I thought he might be top three or maybe fourth, him and Nick battling it out in that third or fourth place spot after what we saw um, in finals. I, I, I'm glad he's not in sixth. I'm glad he was in the top five. But I really did feel like he didn't look horrible. I'm surprised they, they knocked him as hard as they did because of the fact, like I said, this is not a typical circumstance. For a reigning Mr. Olympia, there's definitely been reigning Mr. Olympias that have come in and lost their title. It happens. But it, I don't think it's ever happened that someone has won the year before and came in fifth the following year. And that's why I was so shocked that they didn't compare Rami with the rest of the field 
like as much as they did the other guys. They kept him in the same position, didn't move him from the end. And I almost wonder if there's any politics involved in this decision. Now, granted, I don't think after watching this that this decision was a bad decision. I think Hadi Chupin deserved the title. I think he looked phenomenal. He really brought it. And I'm not, I, I don't disagree with that victory at all. I think Hadi Chupin did deserve to win. But the little conspiracy theorist inside of me wonders. We did have these controversies with Rami blowing off these guest appearances. He didn't do the big guest, per, uh, the guest posing in Pittsburgh. And Derek did. Derek actually filled in for Rami. Derek wound up in second here. A lot of people said that Rami wasn't doing much to represent the title. He wasn't making appearances. He wasn't really active on social media until the weeks right before the Olympia. Could there have been a political factor that played into this decision? Because like I said, I do, I still think it's unusual that they didn't move Rami at all. Prejudging most of the finals until the very end where they did move Rami into the center for the very end of the last call out. But to not, I just think it's weird to leave the leave the defending champion on the outside because, like I said, if you're going to make that decision to drop him that low, I would have thought you'd been comparing him more to make sure that was the correct decision. Because this is, make no mistake, this is history that we're witnessing right here. Rami placing this low and Hadi winning. Um, this is a really big moment for bodybuilding and seeing Nick Walker and Derek Lunsford, like I said, doing as well as they did, and then you know Rami and Brandon on the outside looking in of that top three. Is a big deal. And this was this Olympia really delivered. This is what I wanted to see. This was exciting. This was a great result. And like I said, like we all said going into this, this was the most wild card anything can happen Olympia based on that competitor list, based on the guys that were doing this show. And we got a wild card anything can happen result. We got a break from the norm. We got a brand new champion, a brand new top three. We got a guy that has never competed in open as the runner up. We got Nick Walker in third place, brand new first time in the top three at the Olympia. I should also mention as far as the top 10 go, you also had Bonac, Andrew Jacked, Raphael Brandau, and Hunter Labrada in there. And Michael Crizzo and Ian Valier wound up outside of the top 10. So those were two guys that were in the conversation that ended up not placing within the top 10. But I hope you guys are excited because this is this is the Olympia that we wanted to see. A wild card, anything could happen, and certainly anything did happen. Now also, the classic physique results. Classic physique, not a huge surprise here in terms of the winner. Chris Bumstead wound up winning. Ramon Dino wound up in second. That was pretty expected based on what we saw at prejudging. They had a top two call out um, of just Ramon and Chris. And that was one of the things, if you look at men's open bodybuilding, that's one of the things that made men's open so exciting and such a surprise because typically we get a call out like that in men's open. We get a top two or a top three, and we get an idea of who that top three is. But in this Olympia, all you had was a top six call out. The first call out and the last call out both had six guys in it, unlike classic physique where we kind of know the result because there was only two. So that made men's open even more exciting. Um, in third place, Urs Kalsinski. Fourth place, Breon Ainsley. And in fifth place, Mike Sommerfeld. Surprisingly, Terrence Ruffin finishing outside of that top five. I'm assuming he was in sixth. I'm going to do a little bit more in-depth analysis tomorrow when I have the scorecards. Um, but just off the, off the top of my head, I think Urs looked a little off compared to how I would have liked to see the conditioning. I think the conditioning could have been tighter. And I think it looked tighter in some of the updates that we saw. And I think he would have been pushing Ramon a little bit harder had his conditioning been a little bit tighter. So I think Urz's conditioning, for whatever reason, may have slipped a little bit. I think Breon actually looked really impressive. Even though he took fourth, um, he deserved it. I mean, he did deserve to place over Terrence. His conditioning was better than Terrence. And I think the reason Terrence was outside of that top five was lack of conditioning. He looked pretty soft. And I think that was the biggest explanation for why he placed where he did. But I got to give Breon credit here. Even though he was fourth, very good conditioning, uh, very complete. And just overall, not a bad way to go out. He is going to be going to 212. This was his final Classic Physique Olympia. Um, but this Classic Physique Olympia, not super controversial, not super surprising. Chris Bumstead looked phenomenal. He deserved the victory. Um, bigger than ever, better than ever. Same conditioning, better conditioning, whatever you want to say. Chris Bumstead is just a world-class classic physique athlete. And Flex Lewis asked Chris, or Flex Wheeler rather, asked Chris in an interview after the Classic Physique Awards 
would you ever consider going over to men's open, putting on 20, 30 pounds? And Chris kind of laughed it off and said, no, the only way I would ever do that is if it was just for fun. And I was like four weeks out from another classic show. So I don't think we ever will truly see a foray into men's open bodybuilding from Chris Bumstead, as exciting as that would be. But we now do have the first ever four-time Classic Physique Olympia champion, Chris Bumstead, the most successful in this young division Classic Physique champion of all time. Very, very impressive. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot to say about these results, especially men's open bodybuilding, very surprising results. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I'm going to do some more Olympia analysis. And tomorrow, of course, we've got the interview, the Olympia wrap-up with Arnold Schwarzenegger on the channel tomorrow. And just a reminder, my coverage of the 2022 Olympia weekend is presented to you by the Arnold Sports Festival, the world's number one health, fitness, and sports expo. To celebrate the 35th annual Arnold Classic, they're running a limited time pay-per-view sale. Enjoy all the weekend's nonstop action for just $35. Don't miss out. Purchase yours today before the sale is over. Head on over to arnoldsports.com and check it out. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, Olympia Weekend, signing out. I think that every bodybuilder has something unique. Uh, if it is the pose off or if it is a certain pose that really closes the deal. I think the action is a lot of it in a combination of symmetry, of size, muscle separation, definition and the performance so that you can show all this quality that you have because they have a lot. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.